Welcome to the Wednesday edition of the Box Seat. I'm Adam McGrath and joined by Mark Olmus. Mark, midweek racing, some really nice types going around and looking forward to finding some winners. Oh yes, especially those two-year-old races at the start there, Adam. Welcome to our viewers, but looking forward to getting stuck into it. Let's take a look at the conditions that we are going to be faced with. The movable rail is out 15 metres. Some light breeze expected picked up through the afternoon, but a good day for racing nonetheless. Let's get straight into the first, Mark. It is an event for the two-year-olds over the 1,200 metres. Yes, we'll go straight into the replay horse as well. Art Series, a nice filly. We'll go back and have a look at her last start. Home straight over on the outside, Street Fury comes at it, and so does Caress the Stroll, and also right behind them, then trying to wind up Royal Strata with Art Series running on hard down the outside with Very Angry Gal on the inside. Street Fury with 100 to go, Very Angry Gal deep out, cutting it down. It's Very Angry Gal reaching the lead in the shadows. Strong performance here. Nice performance there by Art Series. She's well bred and looks to be a pretty nice type. Been unlucky in both of those races, have been caught wide so far in a career, but the recent trial was good. The form lines have held up from that with the winner of the trial winning its race comfortably. Barrier two here, William Pike, there's a lot to like. Yeah, there is a lot to like, Adam. And just the race experience, I think, as well. That's a big, big tick. Another one with race experience is number six, Teacher's Pet there from the Dan Morton stable. William Pike rode last start. Of course, he's riding Art Series here. Chris Parnham rides. I was really surprised with, uh, well, the price it got out to, considering William Pike and Dan Morton, but uh, ran on very nicely and gets the right draw from barrier three. Should be finishing off strongly the filly by Frost Giant. Yeah, the final 200 metres was very good, wasn't it? Loved the way this horse attacked the line. I think that 1,200 metres is just ideal, getting the extra 100. Chris Parnham gets the ride. We know that he's a stable representative there as well. So, yeah, I think this horse is uh, certainly probably what's out of those two art series and teacher's pet, in my opinion. A couple of the first starters we've got to touch on as well here at a monsoon blinkers on this uh, gelding by street cry out of Europa point so makes it a half to Ravelli who's flying at the moment beat regal class last start of course Brad Parnham rides this one for Dan Morton in the Amelia Park colours barrier one Gee, wasn't that trial impressive? If you get a chance, go back and watch it, uh, viewers. Well, there's three that come out of that trial, and look, we've probably got um, Reganella, the one that's probably the one to beat, but Monsoon's the one that you have to just keep an eye on. If you take a look, tucked away on the rail, looking for a way out a couple of times, Chris Parnham just takes his time, looks over the shoulder, then eases there, and then lets the run go down. And it reminded me a lot of Ravelli, that quick turn mm. of foot as well. So I think, although it was third out of the three that are in this trial, it's probably the one to really keep an eye on. Really got squeezed up by Dan Stake there, and Chris Parnham just waited, as you mentioned, Showed a really nice turn of speed. Also will be a really nice uh, galloper over 1,400, 1,600 metres by Street Cry, of course. Just quickly, we'll touch on Roganella because it won that trial quite nice. It was three wide with a little bit of cover, but... These Reganos are flying at the moment, especially in these Oakland Park stud colours. Yeah, the two-year-olds go so well, and this horse just eased up nicely with Jason Whiting, so I think it's certainly going to be very competitive. But I'm going to go with the race experience here. Number five, Art Series, from six, Teacher's Pet, three, Roganella, and two, Monsoon. I've got the six on top here, Teacher's Pet, from number two, Monsoon, three, Roganella, and five, Art Series. Race number two at Ascot, it's over the 1,000 metres mark. There's some pretty nice types here, but I think we're all watching one horse after a very impressive victory last start. It was a nice win. It wasn't Class 5 company, it was Aerozine leading all the way. And they're followed by Grecian Summer. Further back is War in Paris, who looked 100 to 1. Coming to the 200, Aerozine had booted well clear. Aerozine shot four lengths in front of Festive Excess, followed by Capanda. Then Incredible Hop, but he's shaking up this big fellow Aerozine, and he's really running through the line. Aerozine won by about three and a quarter incredible Hulk compared. Well, when the favourite missed the kick on that opportunity, you can see Erezine just bolt out and from there was untouched. Now, there's a little bit more speed in this race when you do see the likes of Festive Express, Crandom as well, another one that can push forward. And even Star Glitter from Barrier 1 now can put a bit of pressure on. But I just don't think they have the speed of Erezine. And I think the horse is going to get a lot of confidence from that victory. It's the one to beat here. Yeah, you may be right, Adam. But also, the speed's drawn inside of him this time. He drew very well in four and got the nice run along out in front. Nothing was there to pressure him. I dare say Festive Excess and a few of the others that you mentioned, Cramden as well, will be all be up there and won't let him get it that easy in front like he did last start. Uh, star Lightning in this race as well. Clint Johnston Porter claims. Now, Beaten only two and a half lengths by Remember Berlin. We've seen what that galloper has since come out and done on the weekend. Yeah, look, it was a really nice performance, but I'm still not sure of the form lines of her up to this quality. The runs before that, the wins at Narrage and York were good. And yes, that Remember Berlin form line certainly holds up, but Remember Berlin's performance on the weekend was about five lengths better than what we saw here. So I do think there's a couple of other nice types. However, it will be running on strongly. Ruby can run as well. Dan Stake rides for Graham Ballantyne here. That was a nice run on effort behind Just Act Natural now. We know how good Just Act Natural is. So it's a big drop in class here and I really like 
the way the map, the race maps out, as we mentioned, with all the speed, I think Ruby can run, maybe able to sit just off them and be able to uh, be there in the finish. There are a lot of like for likes in that run. You mentioned just that natural, that's a lot of speed, and there's going to be the speed in this race as well. So I think Ruby can run with those form lines, and again, the early speed we mentioned will be one that can attack the line, and that horse can certainly win the race. But I'm going to go with number four, Erezine, from six Cramden, one Star Glitter, and three Ruby can run. I've got the three on top, Ruby can run from number one, Star Glitter, Four Aerozing and two Star Lightning. Race number three at Ascot and Mark, there is a horse that is knocking on the door that just keeps finding a better one. I'm not sure if there's one of those in this race, so it might be able to get a win here. I know, but it is drawn a little bit awkward. We'll come back to that though. Let's have a look at a night of pro. Passage at the top of the straight, followed then by Swiftly and Ravelli at the 250 and a night of pro with a kick from something big, Dusty Storm. Here comes Ravelli down the outside. Look at her come. She's really winding up down the outside, the high chaparral filly. A night of pro tackled by Ravelli and Ravelli. Ravelli storm past to grab the lead, much too strong. Nice performance there by a Knight of Pro, just beaten by a better type on that day. And at the end of the day, the last three runs have been beaten by Regal Class, Victorious Lad, and also Ravelli. There's none of those in this race. The wide draw is the big concern, but I think this horse has got enough speed to be able to get across, get into a nice position. And from there, I still think it's the one to beat. Air tactics will play a big part for it. Vital Touch has been ultra consistent this preparation. He's drawn very nice in his few recent starts, but draws a bit poorer here. The blinkers do go on, though, so should improve an extra length or two. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this horse goes. As you mentioned, he's been getting the perfect draw, the perfect run into a race. Just not really having the class to finish over the top of them, but has been very consistent. For mine, the wide draw now makes it a little bit difficult, but I still see it playing a part in the four. There's Vermont Lady there as well. Chris Parnham rides for Justin Warwick here, a daughter of Schwaz. Yeah, I liked her effort last out of Bunbury behind uh, 8-8 back on the 12th of April. I think a really nice hope from Barrier 4. Well, those form lines certainly look good, don't they? But Vermont Lady has had this opportunity a couple of times this prep, and just starting to wonder how many more opportunities you can give the animal. But with a nice run throughout again, it should be attacking the line strongly. But I'm going to go with our replay horse, number four, a Knight of Pro from 10, Vital Touch, 5, Prince Turbo, and 11, Vermont Lady. I've got number 11 on top here, Vermont Lady from 5, Prince Turbo, 4, a Knight of Pro, and 10, Vital Touch. Race four at Ascot, it's over the 1,600 metres. Mark, there is a very nice type in this. We're all well aware of it, but we need to try to find something to maybe beat it. Yeah, we did see the uh, we did see a nice performance last start in the maiden at Pinjarra. Let's have a look at it winning by three lengths, of course. Filet de Merit. Hilbert also is being ridden desperately towards the inside. 300 left to go. Jambo had let Apache chant. In behind them, Fee de Merit getting a split between them. Jelani Express and wider out is even more alert, but Fee de Merit speared through, dashed to the lead. 150 to go. Fee Demerit sprinted clear. All interest in the minor placings. The daughter of Demerit comes away with a stunning victory. Race time. This horse just seems to be well above average and just sort of improving with each performance. You have to take note here that William Pike won elite artist last start. He gets off to Cerise and White to ride this horse. So that's a massive tick already in their favour. I love the way this horse has been able to attack the line. I think the race experience has been the big key. I'm not sure it's good enough to beat Ravelli, but it's certainly the leading contender in my opinion. Ravelli, of course, we saw in the previous race replay play of a night of pro Ravelli won that race it was a nice performance there barrier nine here is of some concern but the turn of speed that uh, she has could just uh, mean that she has better chances in this and better claims. I don't think Barrier Nine's that big of an issue. No, nah, look, they'll just drop out to the back and from there they'll just go straight around. And this horse is a serious class animal. She's going to be one to watch at Belmont and for mine, nothing will get anywhere nearer. Out to 1600 metres as well, certainly looks to suit. By high chaparral, the more distance the better, Adam. What have you got on top here? I've got her on top. Number three, Ravelli from six, Philly Demerit. Number one, something big and two, Dusty Storm. I've got Ravelli on top also. Number three from the six, Philly Demerit. Seven Massa Mac and five Elite Artists.